hundred years ago, my great-grandfather was a camel driver. Now, this hasn't got anything to do with the story except to show what an eccentric lot my family really were. In fact, from the time bullock teams went out of fashion as a popular form of transport, my family were crazy about anything on wheels, so long as it was comfortable. And while other people were content to develop the horseless carriage in its more conventional forms, my family had other ideas. Well, only great-grandfather with his camels knew what an influence he'd had on family traditions. When cycling became popular, my family started off in the normal way, but eventually had to go one better. In fact, everything they did had to be different. So how could I, at the age of two, understand the headlong rush with which events in other places would eventually catch up with? It all began about 1856, when James Alexander Holden started a leather business in Adelaide, making harnesses, saddlery and sporting goods. The business flourished, and later, when a family friend was brought in, the new firm of Holden and Frost expanded into carriage making and upholstery for the new motor industry. A new company was formed when the events of World War I caused an embargo on the importation of car bodies. It became one of the biggest industrial enterprises in Australia. Bodies for chassis imported by General Motors were being made exclusively by Holdens and eventually the two companies merged to form General Motors Holdens Limited. A second plant was set up at Fisherman's Bend in Victoria and expansion continued until the new company had captured a big slice of the Australian car market. But still, only bodies were being built. When World War II broke out, the two plants were successfully converted to produce an incredible range of products. The war effort proved the potential of secondary industry in Australia and the government threw out a challenge. It was taken up by GMH. And here was I, at 17 years of age, with a huge problem. With all that family tradition behind me, I was still walking. One of Australia's newest industrial centres is Fisherman's Bend near Melbourne. Not so many years ago, a swamp. Now the centre of manufacture of Australia's first produced motor car, the Holden. Australia's Prime Minister, Mr Chifley, is one of the first to inspect the completed model. Inside the 50-acre plant, equipped at the cost of millions, a milling machine planes both sides off the cylinder block at once. Engine assembly of the six-cylinder overhead valve 21.6 horsepower motor is only passed after rigorous tests to suit Australian conditions. And that's how she looks. The car whose appearance and general design had an element of secrecy for so long. Well, as it turned out, 1948 was my year too. Holden, you in my Holden, life is simply divine. All the world is fair, I'm a millionaire on the road ahead. There's a happy sign, Holden, you in my Holden, you were meant to be mine. We will have a wedding. The same week that I bought my first car, I also appeared in my first film. Shot by a friend, of course. What a fantastic motor car. And it was built specially for Australian conditions. They called it the 48215. It took three years for GMH to develop it from the drawing board and millions were spent on its development. But boy, it was worth it. And was it popular? 
They started off making 10 a day, but by 1951 it was up to 100. A few of us did our own thing the year that GMH brought out the second model Holden. A beautiful car with a beautiful name. FJ. Vintage 1953, an Australian to the core. Now they were making 200 a day, but still couldn't keep up with the demand. My thing that year was starring in documentary films. Well, co-starring, really. The real star was the FJ. Being a professional now, I kept a few offcuts from the film to study and improve my technique. Cue the car. Stop. Um, no, no, no. You're looking at the camera. The F card. Action. Oh, sorry. Cut. Oh, cut. Oh, cut. I bought an FJ for myself and entered her in the Red X Round Australia trial. Practice what you preach, that's what I say. Oh boy, what a car. What a performance. What a country. In 1956, GMH announced a huge expansion program. But when I heard they were changing the body shape for the new Model FE, I was horrified. Until I saw the car. And uh, guess who bought the first one off the line? <laughs> In 58 was the year of the FC. Oh boy, were they keeping those models coming. The new proving ground at Lang Lang was designed to simulate all Australian road conditions. And did that put the car to the test? Naturally, I bought one, and the only trouble I had was with my delayed action shutter. Anyway, you've got to admit, I've got some great shots of the car. In 1960, the FB was released. The export market was growing and Holdens were turning up in all sorts of places. The following year saw the inauguration of John Kennedy, the E.K. Holden and some of the most daring feats known to the motor car industry. Oh, my great-grandfather would have been proud of me. In 1962, Brabham hit 160, and General Motors Holdens hit the million. What an achievement, and in only 14 years. The new EJ Holden was being produced at the rate of 606 a day. Oh, you little beauty! Boy, I, I was so excited, I just went out and bought the million and first Holden. Thank you. 
1963, the Queen visited General Motors Holdings plant at Elizabeth, where they were making the new E.H. Holden. I wonder why they didn't call it the E.R. That was the year I gave up stunt work. Well, there are other ways to use a car. I had a holiday in Sydney. In 1965, the HD was released with a bigger engine and disc brakes as optional equipment. Pow! If only they could test them without getting them so messy. Holding you in my holding, life is simply divine. The world is air, I'm a millionaire on the road ahead. The HR came out in 66. It had bigger engines and new safety features which were tested on rigs at the GMH Technical Centre. I found that keeping up the pace was becoming more and more difficult. I recovered, I bought one. It wasn't long after that that I became a star. Well, I made a couple of commercials anyway. Brougham. The new Brougham. A whole new philosophy of luxury and distinction. A car for successful people who want to graduate to a luxury car while they're still young enough to enjoy it. Rowan is the best of everything. The very best. A whole new philosophy of luxury. Rowan. It's a look, it's a style that's coming up. Pow! It's to run. It's the feel of now. It's a shape, it's a look, it's a style that's coming up. Pow! It's to run. It's the feel of now. The two million Holden, a milestone in Australian motoring history. Managing Director of General Motors, Mr. Rear, points out that the big day came only 20 years after the first model was produced. Federal Minister for Transport, Ian Sinclair, speaks and then drives the champagne gold brougham off the assembly line at the Dandenong plant. In 1968, the 11th model, the HK, came out with an optional V8 engine. The same year came the first of those great Monaros. In 1969, the HT Monaro won both Bathurst and a very special place in my heart. At last, I had an opportunity to work behind the cameras. My assignment to film the 1970 HGE before its release. Actually, it was a personal assignment. I just couldn't wait to see it. So I bought the HG, my 13th Holden. Well, what's the use of money if you can't enjoy it? 
Perhaps I was a bit too old for the sporty little GTR Tirana when it came out, but I was too far gone on Holden's to stop now. Setting the trends, making friends, each day ends like the vans. Hitting the heights, the bright lights, getting faster. Maybe I'll leave that one to the racing drivers. I suppose you could say that GMH were always looking towards the future. As early as 1966, they were making cars available to high schools for student driver education courses. And now those lucky kids are driving Taranas and HQs. every model Holden since the 48215 and I reckon that's worth a celebration. Well, it is 25 years after all. But the trouble is, and I guess it really goes back to my great-grandfather and his camels, I've never been able to part with any of them. I mean, I couldn't sell the first Holden, why that'd be like losing an arm. And then there's the FB and the HK and the DCA and the... Holden, you in my Holden. I've still got plenty of room out the back for more.